In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple slicer that lets you sort your tables ascending or descending. I'm going to show you how you can set up that button to sort, as well as give you the ability to change how or which columns you're sorting it by. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So sorting your tables based on certain columns is actually one of the kind of more basic features that is already available for you by default. If we look at this report that I built for this demo for today, I've just created a table here with a few different measures as its columns. Now, let's say you wanted to see which categories had the highest sales. Well, all you'll need to do is to click on the column header. And as you can see, it will sort by descending or ascending. You can choose other columns to sort by as well. So you might want to sort by unit price, or maybe you want to use a combination of, of, you know, multiple columns. So you hold control or hold shift, and that will let you sort accordingly. However, this kind of functionality isn't really that obvious, especially if you're not really familiar with working with Power BI reports. So today we're gonna go through how you can transfer or make this sorting a little bit more obvious by moving it into buttons. So before we start, I just wanna show you quickly how the end product looks like, which is something like this. So as you can see, you are able to sort by descending or ascending, as you can see here. And it also gives you, which we're gonna go through a little bit later, how you can change which column you want to sort it by. So at the moment it's sorting descending based on the average unit price here, but you can choose other dimensions here like sales or maybe the quantity, which is the orders. So let's go back to this empty report here. And as you can see, like we have just set up some simple measures from our data model, which is the Northwind data set. The backend is not so important, but the important thing to understand is that in this table, there is the column name, category name, and everything else are in measures. So the measures we store in the calculations measure folder here, and that's what we use for you know, calculating all of these different values. The first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create table that has the ascending or descending logo so that our users can make the selection from that table. So let's start by creating that table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just enter, click and enter a new data here. I'm just gonna name this one a sort. And uh, I'm gonna create a column called label. And then in this one, we're gonna add the icons. So the icons, you can use the emoji board. If you hit windows dot, it will bring up this little pop-up. So you can just choose the ones that you want to use from here. So to make this, ascending and descending button look like those kind of buttons. We're going to use the, the kind of symbols here. Now, if you want, and we're going to kind of create another column here just to reference the, the labels instead of referring to the actual icon. So for this one, we're going to say ascending. And then for this one, we're going to say descending. And uh, now we're going to load it. Once it's finished loading, we're just gonna simply bring in the label into our report here, change it into a slicer. And uh, we're gonna just convert this into a tile. Just make it a little bit smaller, remove the header. And that's your first step done. So now you have a slicer selection panel that lets you select from ascending or descending. It's not really linked to anything yet, but we're going to go through it now. The next thing is that we'll need to use the rank function in order to rank the categories based on what is selected here in the slicer, if it should be ranked ascending or descending. So we're going to start by creating a simple measure for that. And then we're going to expand on it a little bit more later for the more advanced features. So I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to name this one rank. And from here, we're going to just use, um, we're going to start by writing the rank x function, which is the one that will control how your table is ranked. So I'm going to start with rank x here. And we're going to say rank x 
uh, user table categories. And the expression that we want to use is the sales. So we're going to focus on just one measure for now to sort. Uh, the value will leave it empty. And then for the order, we're going to use ascending. So if I just hit enter here and put this into my table here. Oh, I missed out something here, which is just the wrapping it by all selected. Here we go. So as you can see now, if I sort this in certain order, like an ascending order, you'll see that the rank or how this measure ranks the category is similar to how the sales is ranked in ascending order. So if I click the sales column here, you will see that the ranking is the same way. So we're basically doing the same thing, except that we are using a separate column for it. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to make sure that the table is always sorting based on the rank here in this column. So that way, as you can see at the moment, it's ranking ascending. Now, if I wanted that to be ranked by sales descending, all I have to do is change the DAX or use different parameter. And as you can see, it's still, come on. As you can see, now it's still ranked one to eight. However, the order has shifted. It's now starting from the highest sales to the lowest. And this is the kind of functionality that we're gonna take advantage of. So what we're going to do is we're going to just copy that measure that we've just written. We're gonna write an if statement, and we're gonna say if the selected value in the sort is equals to ascending. So this is now where we tying the, the slicer that we have created here. So it's if whatever is selected is ascending, then we're using the ascending ordering for the sales. Otherwise we'll use the descending. So pretty simple. So now, as you can see, it's now descending. If I click that slicer, there we go. It's sorting by sales ascending order. So now that you are able to sort, the last thing that I typically do is just to hide the ranking column because we want the, or rather like what is, what the values are in this column is not too important to the users. The important thing is that they're seeing the tables in the right order that they want. So from here, I'm just gonna simply do some, you know, quick formatting. So I'm gonna go to the rank here apply it on all of these, just make them all white, just so that they're hidden. So as you can see from here, as I make these selections, the ranking is still happening, but it's just not visible for the users just because they don't really need that information. So now let's extend this solution a bit because at the moment we are able to sort ascending or descending based on the sales measure. However, what if we want to change which measure is being sorted? Now, if you look at the ranking measure that we've created here in one of the parameters is going to be the same concept. So all we need to do is just replace this parameter to be using the measure that we want to sort it by. And um, the easiest way that I found that we could do this is by simply just extending this by creating kind of a switch function to change the values dynamically within these rank X. It's going to look a little bit dirty, but this is the only way that I managed to make it work. So just follow along with what I'm doing here. So in this true statement where it's ascending, I'm going to just, I'm just going to cut the rank X bits that we want or we were using. And then from here, I'm going to just create a switch statement inside. So this switch statement needs to check another table, which is the one that checks what column it needs to sort by. And actually I haven't really done it yet. So I'm going to just put it back to how it was. And we're just going to create that table really quickly. And it's the same concept as the ascending and descending table. So we're going to say sales unit price orders. And then I'm going to call this measures. The table is sort by just load it. I'm going to copy this one just so that we don't have to reformat anything. I'm going to drag in the measures. Oops. Just expand it a bit just so we can see everything. Here we go. So as you make the selection, we theoretically should be changing the parameters in the rank. So we're going to go back to this one. We're going to write our switch statement once more. So switch. And then from here, we're going to create another selected value from the sort by measures. 
and then we're gonna do or add a few parameters here. So if the value is sales, then we're gonna sort it by sales, a set thing. If whatever selected is orders, we're gonna change and sort it by orders. So I'm hoping you, you're getting the idea by now. Unit price. And then for the default, we'll just use sales here. It shouldn't really hit that, so. Okay, so now that we've created that switch statements, we are gonna copy that, and we're gonna do the same thing on the else statements, but obviously it's the opposite way around. So just copy and paste, and then we'll just change these to descending. So hopefully, if I've done everything right, now at the moment it's unit price ascending. If I click descending, there we go, so it works. So if we change the selection to be orders descending, it's giving us the category with the highest order, sorted by ascending, there we go. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to make the sorting of your columns a little bit more accessible to your user. Thanks for watching, as usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.